Right, uh, everybody, today we're going to be looking at this uh, Blue Lab Guardian monitor. I uh, believe it, well, what have we got there? Conductivity, temperature, and pH measurements of um, dirt, water, something along those lines. As we can see, the uh, display uses um, uh, seven segment displays and digits and uh, missing quite a few of them. So uh, you can sort of see that one's actually a bit dim, but this one's missing, those are missing. So I'm thinking, oh, that one there is actually a little bit dim as well. It's not completely out. Um, so quite possibly a, a, perhaps a driver issue. I'm not really thinking it's going to be the LEDs uh, themselves, but yeah, probably more likely a driver issue. Let's uh, crack it open and have a look. Now, you may not be familiar with this product. It is made in New Zealand. Uh, part number 27100 I've got there. Um, no real model number as such. But, uh, yeah. Might only be recognisable by fellow Kiwis. Just four screws on the back. And... Uh, since this is to do with uh, measuring water um, conditions, there's possibly a big rubber o-ring around the edge of the case. Let's hope it uh, stays in one piece when we open that up. easy. Ah, yep, we have a rubber seal inside the channel around the back case there. I'm sure that will be entirely reusable. Although it does look like it may have actually rolled over. Just looking in the side, it may have rolled over. Uh, so I would ex you'd expect it to sit pretty flat, and the rest of it does look pretty flat. Um, actually, along the top edge, it's rolled over as well, so it may, odd chance, it may let liquid in, but uh, anyway, let's see what have we got here. Fairly plain looking board. We've got uh, possibly a regulator 5 volts in, 5 volts out. Yeah. A connector with a um, little RF. Uh, type connector on there. Okay, having a closer look at board. Nothing with the naked eye immediately obvious. Let's uh, zoom in a bit. Um, one, two, three screws holding it in and an empty hole, so I'm thinking somebody may have been in here before. So... Uh, with those screws undone, I wonder if I can get this out without un having to try and unplug the... Uh, yes, yeah, going to slide out. And we will need to unplug some things. Connector on the side. A little SMA type. I think it's SMA. Oh. RF connector and what do we got? Everything. All the brains all on one side. Um, but on a positive note, I don't see any signs of moisture ingress. So I think it's just going to be a, uh, yeah, possibly a driver issue. Or maybe the LEDs are a little worse for wear. Um, you probably can't see it on camera, but uh, these ones are sort of yellow, a little yellow looking compared to these ones. So I wonder if they've just been running too bright and have just slowly burnt out. I'm going to be looking at the pins for the uh, uh, seven segment displays, LED displays. Just make sure these solder joints are any good. 
And I'm not convinced that they are. If we have a look, kind of looks like it could have come away there from from the solder joint there. Let's zoom in a bit. Tell you what, looks a lot shinier through the. Uh, looks a lot shinier on screen than through the lenses. <laughs> that uh, possibly could do with a touch up. You can kind of see a maybe a bit of a ring around the pin where it comes through the solder joint there. definitely worth touching them up I think. Now if we go have a look at these other ones just briefly they some of them kind of look the same they kind of look like these are a possible dry joint as it's called. All right let's see if we can prove prove those solder joints let's power it on while it's out and give everything a bit of a wiggle Go. E -R -R. No, it doesn't look like wiggling things is making it work any different. So what I'm going to do is just run over these contacts. We'll rule that out to make sure that absolutely isn't the problem. Now that I've got so many extra input devices I've got cables running for Africa so I need to do some uh, cable management at some point but uh, that's behind the scenes. So let's just uh, tick all these up. That doesn't appear to be any um, conformal coating on this board so uh, nice and easy to do and uh, be interesting to see they've obviously got these uh, displays hooked up through um, through some shift registers or something uh, because with all these pins, the microcontroller only has so many outputs. So the only way to use the limited number of outputs to drive a larger number of inputs is to uh, use something like a shift register. Um, where you have a, a chip for each display. Uh, all of the inputs are connected together from the pins out of the microcontroller and all of the all of the chips can receive or do receive the same information that is to be displayed but then you have a separate line for chip select and when you activate that only the chip that's been selected gets to actually output the data that is supplied and so only those LEDs light up and this is done in extremely rapid succession so the displays are technically flickering in a state of constant update unless of course I suppose the shift register is, is latched and it doesn't need updating it can just um, stay latched until it's selected again but it would be updated quite rapidly and you'd never see it with a naked eye. Okay, let's uh, check is there any improvement. Uh, no, no improvement. Still the same faded lights there and missing lights here. And, uh, yeah, alright. 
Let's keep looking. Okay, so we'll see. Let's identify these driver chips. What we need to do is see, uh, decide if they're getting or if they're putting out the right output to the segments to light them up. Um, then we could decide if the segment itself is faulty. Otherwise, we need to find out if the input is uh, inadequate. But because we've got partial brightness, I'm inclined to say it could be a driver fault still. But that would mean all of them were faulty. And you can clearly see here the bottom ones are dimmer, the top one there is dimmer. Um, they shouldn't be like that. So uh, the only other time I had a fault on a display driven like this was with an internal PCB fault. And there was a short amongst the tracks, but that was causing a lot of them to light up dim when they shouldn't. But we're missing segments, so. The AMS chip, AS1108WL. Okay, so here's the data sheet. Um, it is a doo -doo 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 display driver as uh, guessed. Um, and it uses, uh, it's got serial I.O., individual segment control, um, all the bells and whistles, uh, supply voltage, um, 2.7 to 5.5 uh, so let's check that shall we let's see make sure we've got proper voltage on these so that they can operate uh, and pin 16 is our VDD pin there uh, pin 16 positive supply voltage so let's check that and make sure that they have what they need to operate okay we have a uh, scope on the screen now and we'll go check pin 16 and make sure we're at uh, uh, what are we 2 volts per division 11 12 13 14 15 16 and we got 5 volts there well that's good so next what we'll look at is the display driver and uh, we've got these DIG 0-3 pins and the SEG A through G uh, and a decimal point. Uh, the DIG 0-3 through three lines, uh, four common cathode driver lines, a sync current from the display. And then we have the SEG A through uh, G, which are seven segment display lines, which source current to the display. And uh, obviously the when, when a segment's having current source to it, the respective cathode line should be pulled to ground as well so that it lights up. So we know um, one of them, the center display is flashing ERR for error. Um, that's because we don't have the sensors plugged in, I believe. It's not getting a valid reading. So with the first R missing the top of the R, which is the center segment, uh, we should look at that first, I think. We know it should be lit up, so it's a good place to start. So I found the data sheet for the display. It's an NFD5641 uh, display unit. And this is how it's configured internally. So this is how we can see that, look, the DIG one, two, three, four lines are uh, common cathode. Each digit, digit one, digit two, digit three, digit four. Um, all of the segments on one particular digit have a common cathode, um, and that relates back to our data sheet um, where we had the separate digit pins. So obviously, each one can drive uh, four segment display, uh, four, or four, four, um, yeah, four number digit display. So that's pretty neat. And here's pins, uh, what do we got? 11742110.53. So um, the data sheet I haven't seen doesn't give me which pin numbers which segment. But what we do know is that we're looking for digit 3, as far as this missing R is concerned, <laughs> and segment G, because E and G form the R, and G is not lit up, and that's on segment 3. So. Got to find, got to find the 
Um, I wonder if it's the it's not the cathode for that digit that's not working because we are getting segment E. So it's not the cathode which is good to know. So yeah, um, but it is pin uh, pin is G. G is the third to last one. Pin 10. Need to figure out which one's pin 10 on this display. Um, but as you can see we've got a, a picture but we've got no uh, pin position. So let's see what we can work out. In hindsight I probably didn't need to do any of that because logic dictates thusly pin 10 drives our G segment. Uh, the one we're missing is on digit 3. Digit 3 does have the E segment. So for that to be able to light up, then the cathode driver, common cathode pin, must be grounded. And digit 4 has got the G segment lit up, as well as the E segment. So we know that its cathode driver is working and because the G segments lit up and it is common to pin 10 through all of the uh, digits then we know that this segment must have the power on it as well uh, as well because the, yeah they're all tied together so I think we can conclude that the LED segments themselves have failed and that the drivers are actually okay and uh, it kind of makes sense with some of them being a bit dim they're just giving up so uh, yeah all right so let's um, probe some of these pins and just have a quick nosy so uh, pin number uh, 10 is going to be our drive and if we have a look we can see a uh, frequency on there it's obviously well it is pulse width modulated for brightness um, and uh, if we have a look at pin uh, 8 and pin 6 there's pin 6 it has a signal there and pin 8 Oop, we slip onto it so there's our pin 8. Must be a bad connection on the other side of that solder joint. <laughs> Here we go, pin 8. Uh, yeah. So pin 8 and pin 6 are our two digits, and pin 10 has plenty of goings on as far as the. Uh, um, LEDs being driven. So I think we can safely say that uh, likely a uh, display fault. So right ways up, that's how I've just sketched it out. 1 through 6 along the bottom row and then uh, 7 through 12 along the top row. Right, so I have ordered some new displays. And here they are, straight from AliExpress. They uh, appear, as far as I can tell, they match up. Um, the number on the original one was uh, NFD 5641 APGF, and these ones are K, uh, KYX 5461 AG. So it's, I think it's 5461A uh, is the key and they certainly look the part so let's hope that they're all wired up the same there was a brief you know, a very basic data sheet on the um, uh, sellers uh, listing and the pinouts from what I could tell look the same so we will find out that I don't know if you can see that you probably can the one on the top's the original one very sort of yellow faded yellow appearance on the on the segments um, which may be an indication of them having expired well it shouldn't be so the LEDs under there will be sealed but um, very 
cleaner looking on the new one so let's uh, put one of those on and see if it looks any better in fact why not just say we'll put them all on <laughs> we'll take our chances we're pretty sure that that's the problem so we'll put them all on and um, have a look all right so we're all soldered in looking good right way up <laughs> and uh, now we just need to plug it in and see if it works or was I completely wrong all along? Place your bets. Plug it in. What have we got here? Oh, I'm missing one digit at the top. But all the rest are coming up. Why am I missing one digit at the top? Did I forget to solder a pin? I hope so. <laughs> it's actually the whole top row. Which is interesting. That sounds like a driver issue in this case. I don't think that we were having any driver issues. Pretty sure I didn't disturb anything else. Let's give the board a bit of a wiggle. No. Maybe it's just this one display. Ah, oh, okay. Maybe I should have just held it in place to see if it lit up and then before I soldered it in. Okay, three, two, once again. Ah, oh, what? So, looking at our pin out, pin 11 is the pin for all of the uh, A segments, which are the top segments that are not lighting up. So we know that the top one works. So let's, and oh, we know the bottom one works as well. So let's grab our uh, multimeter and put it in continuity mode. Get a beat when there's continuity. So I'm going to probe pin 11. And the control I see here, the pins going off to each segment. So let's start running down. And we find right away that uh, the top left pin is connected to that segment. And if we run down the others, there is no beep. So let's check with the one at the bottom just to make, just to, you know, because obviously each of these drivers are going to be wired the same aren't they you would hope so the bottom set of uh, numbers pin 11 goes to the top right pin now if we have a look at the one in the middle and see what we've got okay we've got no connection between pin 11 or the driver chip so uh, maybe that runs through the middle of the board. Uh, it does kind of look like a multi-layer board. Um, maybe the, it actually connects by the pad on the top side and in removing this I may have damaged the pad although I was pretty sure all the pins were loose before I pulled it out. But who knows. So what I'm going to do is run a jumper wire from pin 11 around to this pin at the top and it should work it really should okay will it work huzzah look at that we now have all the segments lighting up as they should So as a quick test, I put the probes in the water. It's a uh, temperature, the big white one, the temperature conductivity probe. And the other one is a pH level meter probe. So if we have a look over here, and we've got a top conductivity 0.1. I don't know what scale it is. It's got ECCF on the, on the side. Um, 18 degrees C would be about right, and 
pH. So I don't know what's a good pH to drink, but it tastes fine to me. Well, thanks for watching, um, and uh, yeah, hopefully it um, taught you something, or otherwise it's just a quick how-to if you own one of these with missing segments, just replace the LEDs blindly. <laughs> anyway, have a good one. See ya.